everyone. Kevin Elson here to look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. In a message to bishop, priests and church workers attending Italy's annual week of liturgical studies. Pope Francis told them in a message that God's mercy is poured out upon the repentant so that they can change and grow. One is reconciled, he said, in order to reconcile. The Pope said the gift of God's mercy is highlighted and experienced in a special way in the sacrament of reconciliation. The Pope said this rite must be experienced as a door, not only to re-enter after being away, but also as a threshold upon toward the various peripheries of a humanity increasingly in need of compassion. In news now from around the world, a priest of the Institute of the Incarnate Word who has lived in Aleppo, Syria for over three years and has been has seen atrocities being perpetrated on Christians and minorities is telling his story about the genocide taking place in the country. Our report says more. The experience is extreme. No person in the world is prepared for a war, regardless of the causes. You see how the whole population is disappearing. The whole material structure is disappearing, and heinous crimes are being committed. It particularly touches and affects us, this genocide against Christian communities. It is a real and documented genocide. Father Rodrigo Miranda arrived in Syria a few months before the start of the war in 2011. He has lived through the chaos of various bombings as a Syrian without abandoning the community entrusted to him. I always say that I learned to be a priest in Syria. I remember a phrase from the day of my ordination, and it is, no one has greater love than the one who gives his life for his friends. That phrase was really true in Syria when one literally had to give his life in every way. Father Rodrigo says the outbreak of war is a foreign conflict, not born from Syrian society. He says while the Syrian government also committed atrocities, nothing has ravaged the country like that for over five years. According to some sources, 470,000 people have died from bombings. Many other people were injured or suffered psychological scars for life. Finding resources and benefactors to rebuild a country is possible. Therefore, it is possible to reconstruct a country and structure, but there is another problem. Who reconstructs a soul? Radical Islam, represented by its bloodiest Daesh attacks, relentlessly pursues religious minorities. In Syria, Christians suffered even before the arrival of ISIS, facing no opposition from the international community. Father Rodrigo says that Christians also feel abandoned by the church itself. Some individuals and communities experience pain and abandonment from within the church. They expect more from us. They are our neighbors. When there is a brother who dies, it is the same mystical body of Christ's suffering. Looking now at news from around the country, Governor Susana Martinez of New Mexico is pushing to reinstate the death penalty during the legislative session in 2017. She decided to call for this action after the recent shooting death of a Hatch police officer. The governor says she supports the death penalty, at least for convicted child killers and those convicted of murdering law enforcement officers. In response, the Catholic bishops of New Mexico in a recent statement said they opposed the governor's plan and said they once again echo the teaching of the church that life is sacred and must be protected from conception in the womb to natural death. The bishop said that it is always tragic and sad when a member of the community is murdered and called for systemic changes in society beginning with the youngest child. Crime, they said, can't be prevented and this is done by an investment in social capital. In 2009, New Mexico repealed the death penalty and created life in prison without the possibility of parole. Finally in the news, with the canonization of Mother Teresa coming up in early September, U.S. Ambassador to the Vatican Ken Hackett, who knew and worked with Mother Teresa and the Missionaries of Charity while he served as president of the Catholic Relief Services, reflects on Mother's life and her similarities to Pope Francis. The canonization of Mother Teresa, which is coming up on September 4th, for me, is a long time in coming because I think at the time she was beatified, she could have been canonized. 
Frances's concept of mercy seems to me to be embodied in her. Mother Teresa was equally simple in the, in the best of senses. Um, in fact, the rule in her community, as, as many people know, was there's no TV, there's no radio, there's no air conditioning. Um, she just kept it very simple. Francis has to be with the people. We see him in the audience drawing great, great strength and enthusiasm. So I'll give you an example of Mother. So Mother came to CRS office in Baltimore. And she got out of her car. And there are people just coming home from work and walking up the sidewalk. And there was this young woman with her briefcase, all smart-like, uh, walking. And Mother got out of the car and said hello with her, her, her big smile. And the woman almost had a heart attack right there. So mother saw that and she just hugged her right in the middle of the street. It was just so spontaneous. And that's kind of a Francis thing. Her charism was to just be there with people as they died uh, or were dying, as the kids were left in the street, uh, she was always there. Uh, that, that spirituality of kind of presence. Where Mother pushed the missionaries of charity was to the edge, to the most difficult places. They were always reaching out to those who needed a higher degree of attention. The U.S. Embassy to the Holy See will launch an online exhibit documenting the deep ties Blessed Teresa of Calcutta had with the United States. The online exhibit will debut August 26 on the embassy's website, va.usembassy.gov, as well as on its Facebook page. The site will include many items from her repeated trips to the United States. By the way, in 1996, Mother Teresa was declared an honorary citizen of the United States, a declaration that requires an act of Congress or presidential proclamation. To date, only eight people have received honorary citizenship. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.